If you want to be effective in your collaboration and communication, you'll want to employ the following Crucial Conversations strategy. We often have to take the responsibility to enter into difficult circumstances. Change is not a comfortable thing for a lot of people. And talking about change is going to make some people feel uncomfortable. And being viewed as a change agent means that you're going to be potentially frustrating, annoying, irritating, and maybe even making others angry. <laughs> That's the reality. Change can be messy. Change can be uncomfortable. And it's really important to recognize that as a self-differentiated leader, it's your responsibility to trust what you're doing, to trust in your why, to trust in your methodology through influencer strategy, to trust in your logistical strategy with 40X, and to recognize that your why of improving the world one letter at a time and, and making those changes is going to benefit the people around you is to trust that what you're doing is going to be the better betterment of the world. Well, then it's okay to deal with some of the challenges, but it's also important to recognize that to deal with the challenges means you're going to have to enter into those challenging conversations, crucial conversations. And these are conversations where stakes are very, very high, meaning every conversation we have because people have a vested interest. And when, pe when the stakes are high, when there's a potential for a conversation to get charged, you really need to know what you are doing. Crucial conversations is something you have to live and you have to experience. And if you understand the strategy, it can make all the difference in the world. And I know, Talissa, this is, this is an area that you and I have been exploring for several years now. And it's an area that we are continue to, continuing to growing, grow in. Um, do you want to sort of uh, address a crucial conversations component? And I'll jump in wherever you need me to. Sure. You know, when I think about crucial conversations, we have these probably more often than not. One of the first things that comes to my mind is that you always want to be genuine and start with the heart. And this does go back to your why. When you're entering into dialogue, which is the free flow of meaning, in conversation with someone, you have to be very clear about what is it that I really want and how is it going to benefit and impact others around me. You know, whenever you're coming into a conversation, one of the things you don't want to do is blame other people or even let other people be responsible for your own thinking. You want to be very clear about what it is you're looking to discuss, share matters of the heart, and just make sure that you kind of establish that, that right up front so people know where you're coming from. And that's easy to do if your why is very clear. So the next step is whenever you, you are going to have conversations with folks is learn to look. Learn to look and, and notice those opportunities where sometimes safety might be at risk a bit, okay? I, I've entered into conversations before where I felt very uncomfortable. You get the, the sweaty palm syndrome. You start to maybe you shake a little bit. You're thinking, geez, you know, how, how am I going to approach this? But if you come in and your heart's in the right place, you have some integrity established because, you know, you work well and you communicate well with other people, you, know, you want to put out there your ideas and, and see how the, the other person is responding to those because this is all working towards establishing a mutual sense of purpose. One thing you don't want to do is to stay back and be silent. I've done this before too. And silence equals violence in that you're letting other people kind of think for you and run through the conversation with you. You're not really establishing anything. Instead, you're, you know, it's kind of subtractive, if you will. It's not additive to that, that free flow of meaning dialogue and, and really working together towards that, you know, that common purpose. You know, whenever you do enter into dialogue, you want to make it a safe place. Okay, where it's purposeful and it's meaningful to the other person. You already kind of know what, you might already know what they're thinking, and maybe you don't, but you want to be able to enter that dialogue where it's safe to discuss and share just about anything. And if it's coming from the heart, and again, people know that it's coming from that heart and you've established that up front, this is not too difficult to do. You also kind of have to watch your demeanor a little bit as well. You don't want to come across as attacking or abrasive. You want to come across as open and willing to listen and hear other people. So it's really important in doing that that you master your story. So you don't want to come in you know, angry or, or scared or hurt. You want to come in with this idea of 
you know, in my head, this is what I want to establish or achieve and to be open about that and, and have some clarity and, and really throw out there, you know, if Dr. H, you and I are going to have a conversation, we might disagree on something, but throw that out there. Okay, this is what we're looking to try to do. What is the best way we can collaboratively come together and make this work? Even if we don't see eye to eye on something, you can absolutely have a, a very effective, crucial conversation by coming, in, coming into it with an open mind. Again, you'll want to speak persuasively and state your pathway, not abrasively. So you want to come in, again, with that open ideas and understand that what the other person has to say is also key in, in moving your ideas forward or even in taking somewhat of a control down the pathway you want to go down. Um, it's, it's so important to explore what other people are thinking. Ask questions of your peers. Ask what they're thinking. You know, m prepare yourself before you walk into a meeting that you know you're going to have a crucial conversation. What are other people's thoughts about it? What are they thinking? Um, and, and look for those crucial moments when you notice someone else might be clamming up or staying silent. Or maybe, maybe there's a potential for a blow up and you see it on someone's face. Try to take the, the notches down a few degrees to see that Okay, let's go back to that, that meaningful purpose, open dialogue, and model actually for the other person how to have a crucial conversation. Because it, it, it's not difficult to have if you, if you maintain your, your, your um, stature and you don't have a, a failure of nerve, if you will. From that point, after you've had a few conversations, you, you, you know, you're, you're starting to move the, the climate to where it's comfortable, everyone's talking, it's time to move to action. And this is where we can actually... Um, you know, see far enough that, that the results can be achieved, whatever that is. And that doesn't mean it's always going to be, you know, one conversation is going to take care of everything. This might mean multiple conversations, but establishing relationships and building rapport overall, you know, and it's starting with the heart, learning to look, making things safe, mastering your story, stating your pathway forward, and putting dialogue into a free flow of meaning and sharing and exploring others' pathways. This is the way to have a, a crucial conversation that can be ultimately effective in, in moving to action your innovation plan, your ideas, and your pathway forward. I think you've done a, a wonderful job making a connection to all the key ideas. Mm -hmm.